Coming up here at 11, Governor Andy Bashir outlined his budget plan this evening. We've got those details on the way for you. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening to you. I'm Dakota Makers. We begin tonight with an update concerning a missing Perry County family. The father and daughter were last seen on New Year's Day. Today, we learned that 69 year old Dale Williams was found dead. Troopers say his body was found close to a creek bank in the Rowdy community. No foul play is suspected. His body is being taken to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Troopers say the search continues for his daughter, Misty. Well, calling it a change to chance to lead tonight, Governor Andy Bashir officially revealed his budget plan for Kentucky. All week, the governor has been previewing his spending priorities. It includes a record $2 billion in dollar investment in K-12 through education and for the first time, funds for pre-K for four years old. Now, it calls for significant raises for both state police troopers and social workers. And the governor endorsed the House's 6% raise for all, Kentucky, all state workers. Chad Hedrick was in the House chambers for tonight's address. He calls it the Our Future is Now budget with plans to invest in education, the workforce, and health care to change the trajectory of the Commonwealth, especially after the record year of economic growth and investments. Right now, we don't have to choose. We can be both fiscally responsible while making investments in our people. As Kentucky lawmakers work to pass a budget this session, Governor Bashir has an extensive wish list. All week, we've been getting a look at what the governor is prioritizing, putting education at the top of the list, from funding pre-K, giving all school personnel 5% raises, and more than $500 million in SEEK funding. But we must do more in this budget to keep, to retain our great teachers. So I'm providing $79 million over the next three years for a student loan forgiveness program for public school teachers. The governor is also looking to expand Kentucky's agritech industry, giving $75 million for a research and development center in eastern Kentucky. My budget ensures that Kentucky will be the agritech capital of the United States, not just now, but into the future. That means not just having the facilities, not just doing the work, but also coming up with the ideas, creating the intellectual property. Earlier this week, the governor unveiled plans for health care and addressing the nursing shortage, also public safety and upgrades to infrastructure to attract companies. So this budget prepares us to secure the next Ford, and it aims to provide every Kentucky region with the opportunity to land it. In an unprecedented move, the House filed a budget bill before the governor's address, saying they spent months meeting with stakeholders and waiting on the governor is a waste of time. Both House and Senate leaders are critical, saying they have not actually seen the governor's budget. It'll take us probably over the weekend to even figure out what the differences look like. So to, to try to speculate about whether or not there's common ground at this point is, is really almost impossible. Well, that was Chad Hedrick reporting. Tonight, Pulaski County families are mourning the loss of a school teacher. 40 year old Stephanie Foster died from COVID 19 Tuesday. It's the district's first COVID related death. Members of the school community there say she was extremely connected to her students and a leader on campus. And they say, in addition to all the young lives Foster impacted as a teacher, she was a mom to two young sons. We're going to try to support that family as much as possible. As far as our school community, that's going to be big as far as um, impacting and the grief that, that our community feels. And the superintendent says counselors are on campus helping students cope. Today, we talked to a doctor at the University of Kentucky about how to talk to your children about deaths in their school communities, including teachers and other students. Well, Kentucky's COVID surge continues with another record high positivity rate. Let's take a look at today's record. The state reported 9,267 new cases today, bringing our case total to now a little more than 962,000 cases. There were 29 new deaths as well, putting the Commonwealth's death toll at 12,484. And the positivity rate is at a record 27.77%. You can always find the latest COVID-19 information on our website at WYMT.com. Weather-wise, outside of a few showers, all is quiet in the mountains this evening. I preface that with this evening because we've got a big potential winter storm on the way as we head towards the weekend. 
We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about what's going on outside tonight. I-75 at Mount Vernon in good shape. No weather troubles out there. Downtown Whitesburg all quiet, sitting at 43 degrees at the moment. That dew point at 32, so we still have a little bit of a separation there between the air temperature and the dew point. Mid-50s we got to today in many spots. A couple upper 40s stayed with us, Harlan being the main factor there, but also Wise in the mid-40s. But the rest of us, mid to upper 50s, a lot of us stay in the 40s out there this evening. Few showers continue, even fewer in number than earlier into portions of Floyd County, into Pike County, and mainly into Letcher County at this hour. Didn't see any of those on the Whitesburg camera, but we'll continue to watch that as well. Low 30s tonight. Cloudy with a stray shower or flurry possible as we head through the night. The last of that moisture working through. I'll have the very latest on our winter storm potential for the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Dakota. All right, Evan, thank you. Well, we will have more coverage on our potential winter storm and the latest closing on the WYMT News app. Now, if you have not downloaded the app, just hold your phone over the QR code on your screen now. Now, this will take you to a link to our news app that you can download. You can always find the latest closings and delays along with breaking news alerts. We encourage you to download both the WYMT News and weather apps. Those are great tools to have. Well, the Red Cross hosted a blood drive at the Mountain Arts Center today, inviting people in the Prestonsburg area to help battle the national blood shortage. Now, the drive, hosted in partnership with the city, collected 32 units of blood to be added into the national blood supply. A supply that officials say is at the lowest it has been in more than one decade. And though the drive is over, there are more to come and other ways to help out. I appreciate everyone here in the community pulling this together this week. Um, also, in addition to blood, there's, we have a real need for volunteers right now. So if someone's not able to donate or uh, that doesn't really fit their need, uh, we could really use some volunteers. To find out how you can help with the shortage, you can head over to our website or roll up to a blood drive near you. Well, despite a global pandemic, the Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates reported that they broke their record of saving more than 1,000 organ donations in 2021. The nonprofit shared that 2021 was the fourth consecutive year of growth for transplants. Unfortunately, with thousands waiting, 20 people die each day without receiving a life-saving transplant. Well, in 2018, the Pikeville Veterans Memorial Park was open to the public. Since then, several stopped to pay their respects at the memorial to sit and admire the jet or find help from a fellow vet. Our Jordan Mullins has more from Pikeville VFW post number 3769. The city of Pikeville, businesses, donors, and the Pikeville VFW post number 3769 came together to build the Pikeville Veterans Memorial Park. This is a community park. The community should come here. He said this is also a park for veterans. It is a non-intrusive coping mechanism for veterans suffering from PTSD. And work continues to be done as a retaining wall and signs were added near the park's jet. But the park is not just for show. It can save lives, give veterans hope, and give them a chance to reach out to fellow vets in the local VFW post. It's allowed the post to reach out to the veteran population in the county that hasn't reached us before. The Department of Veterans Affairs reported that in 2019, more than 6,200 veterans took their own lives, around 17 per day. Nearly 100 of those who took their lives were Kentuckians, the majority between the ages of 35 and 74. We're trying to reach a target audience that's been trained that the good of your organization is what matters and individually you may matter you may not but if you have problems then you're weak but that's not the case these statistics are saddening to many across the country and here in the mountains but the park gives vets in the community who need help a meeting ground veterans that need to talk more will listen more when a veteran when they're talking to me up here at pikeville veterans memorial park I'll talk as long as they need to talk, whether it be 20 minutes or two hours. A place to find peace and to offer help for those who need it. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. 
Well, officials said they are aware of veterans that have been directly helped by the park and are thankful to serve fellow vets and the community. Well, the North Laurel High School Band was selected to represent the Commonwealth in the National Memorial Day Parade in Washington, D.C. this year, but the band needs help. Now, the band from the Commonwealth is asked to be, that's the first band to be asked to play in the parade in the last few years. Band members and the director are very excited for this opportunity, but they are asking for donations, sponsorships, and ways to set up more fundraisers to be able to, to, be able to pay for their trip. It was pretty stunned at the beginning. I announced it at the very beginning of the marching band last season, and after coming off a season where we didn't get to do anything, they were like, this is a lot at once. We, uh, we came back into the KMEA marching band circuit to compete, which we hadn't been there in several years. And then all at once, we're also you know, representing the whole state out in D.C. Links to donate or to reach out to the band director for sponsorships will be on our website at WYMT.com. Well, a 13-year-old's hobby has turned into an unofficial business. Colby Ambergy began baking when he was only eight years old. Look at him there. Now he is getting orders from all over the county. While it is still only a hobby, he says there is a ton of potential for the future of Bergie's bountiful bakes. I'd love to have like a little bake shop somewhere, you know, don't have to be too big, just something that I can sell what I make. Well, he says he appreciates the community's support. Well, coming up here at 11, our state's justice system was put on pause during the pandemic, but despite reopening courtrooms, several are still waiting for justice. And a week ago tonight, we were dealing with snow. For us, it's a few showers, but more could be on the way for the weekend. I'll have all those details straight ahead.